just for one person I'm singing. Breathe and say it is well. Say it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Sometimes because we're not aware angels are all around us to minister to minister and so you have to tune your heart to worship him tune your heart to worship him where before the throne of grace pray in your spirit Pray in understanding, pray in tongues if you must. Sometimes it's difficult for your heart to be quiet. But when there's corporate worship, this is the time where you just begin to breathe in the presence of God and receive strength and receive life. Two people that you haven't seen in two days. We need to move. 
from your seat. Anybody you haven't seen in two days. Okay, anybody you haven't seen in ten minutes. <laughs> Amen. I love your smiles. You need to move from your seat. Make sure the person is smiling.
will never be short of gratitude. We slept. Arrows were flying. Arrows were flying. Some up, some down in the middle. Some got us. But in the morning, God said no. God said no. He said, my daughter, he said, my son, rise up, rise up and give me praise. That is why I love this song. He said, I command my body to praise the Lord. You are able to raise your hands. You are able to raise your left hand. It means that you don't have stroke. You are able to move your leg. You are able to move your body. It means that God has seen you well. God has done you well. This morning, lift up your voice and give God the praise. Lift up your voice and give him the glory. Lift up your voice and say, God will thank you. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. All praise belongs to you. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God a praise for he alone is worthy. We slept. We are woke. And in all, the Lord sustain us. What a mighty God that you and I serve. We give him the glory. Please have your seats. Amen. You are welcome to Living Springs International Church. We are the oasis of what? Life. Know that you are at the right place at the right time. God knew you were coming, so he prepared for you. He prepared a special word for you. So just relax in his presence and know that your life will never be the same. With the clap of it, let's invite the father of the house. Hallelujah. Reverend Yao Bamfu, hallelujah. Give God the praise. Give God the glory. With a clap of it, let's invite the father of the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. The devil thinks he's bad. But he doesn't know that God is even more bad than he is. In a good sense. Hallelujah. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Bow down your heads with me. I want you to just open your mouth and bless the Lord. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, I don't know what kind of week you've had. Maybe it's been one of challenges, one where the enemy came down so strong with voices of discouragement, but you are here. Maybe it took you a lot of effort to get up in the morning and get dressed and come here, but you are here. And you want to be like David. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. He said, the humble shall hear of it and be encouraged. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Hallelujah. Bible says, this poor man cried out to the Lord. And he heard him and answered him and delivered him from all his fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around the righteous, hallelujah, and delivers them out of all their trouble. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I thank you that I belong to Jesus. I thank you that I am covered. There is a covering. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. We have been kept by the power of God. Lift up your voice and acknowledge him that he is the reason why you are here. Lift up your voice. If you can pray in the spirit, lift up your voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Some of you, you journey to other places, but you are back by the grace of God. You want to lift up your voice and thank God. Some are about to travel. Some have already traveled. A few of our members have traveled over overseas. Lift up your voice. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. In the name of Jesus, your praise will continually be in my mouth. This morning we say that we lay down, we slept, we awoke because the Lord God sustained us. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us so that we may be able to say both the Lord God is our helper we will not be afraid what man can do to us and so this morning your word says that he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide 
under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him shall we trust. This morning we invite you, Holy Spirit. Without you, our gathering is in vain. Without you, our gathering is just like any social gathering. But we are not gathered before men. We are gathered before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are gathered before the great I am, the ancient of days. The one who transcends my God, everything that man has ever seen. He transcends my God, the heavens. We lift your name on high. As we pray this morning, we silence the voice of the enemy. We come against witchcraft spirits and principalities and powers and demonic entities. We render them of no power. We take away their arms and their weapons of war. And we declare that our God is a man of war. This morning we declare, have your way, ancient of days. Breathe upon us this morning. Breathe. Breathe upon us the breath of life. And we know that we will never be the same. Breathe upon us the breath of healing. And our sicknesses will dissipate in the name of Jesus. This morning, let healing manifest. Let your glory be seen. Let your hand be exalted. Let your hand be exalted. In the name of Jesus, we declare liberty. Liberty in this sanctuary. Liberty. For the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so we announce to demon spirits and principalities and powers uh, that the spirit of the Lord is here. And because the spirit of the Lord is here, we announce that there is liberty. Power of the Holy Ghost. As your word comes, let your name be glorified. Uh, exalt my God, your word above all things. And in the name of Jesus, Says, let your word be magnified up let your word come out with simplicity yet with power in the name of jesus and i your servant lord hide me under the shadow of your wings and let your word my god come forth up. in the name of jesus we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor in jesus mighty name agree with me let us say together amen please be seated you're welcome to living springs international church and we indeed are in oasis of life. Hallelujah. Uh, I didn't know until just last week that people even get offended by the fact that we say we are the oasis of life. You won't believe it. Somebody is offended just because we say that we are a place where there is life. Oh my God. What a mighty God we serve. What about when we start talking about the other things that have been prepared for us? The Bible says, I has not seen nor ear heard. Nor has it been revealed to a man. The thing that God has prepared for those who love him. But we know because it has been revealed to us by his spirit. Hallelujah. So when we start talking about things that have been revealed, what will you do? This month we've been talking about the subject of love. And we began by saying that love in the English language says that it is a feeling of great affection for someone. But if we go by the English definition, we are going to be disappointed because love is much deeper, love is much stronger, love is much, much more powerful than that. So love is the most important quality in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. So with me, love is the most important quality in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. The kingdom of our God is all about love. <laughs> And it is the central message of the gospel. So love is much more than a feeling. Hallelujah. And love is actually a commitment. And it is a choice of conduct that in turn produces powerful feelings. So it's a commitment, a decision that you make. It's a conduct. And out of that decision, you find that you even have more feeling for the person or for um, the call for which you have been called. Love is a consistent and a courageous decision. It's a commitment. It's a consistent, courageous decision that you have made to extend yourself for the well-being of others, to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. According to the Bible, God is love. Say with me, God is love. So love is the nature of God. We learned that last week and the week before. The law of God is all about love. 
the spirit of God is the spirit of love. Everything about the scriptures is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when a man says he loves God but he hates his brother, the Bible says he's a liar. He's not speaking the truth. Because how can you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother whom you see? Because the truth is your brother is the image of God. In the image and in the likeness of God, he made us. So how is it that you hate your brother whom you see, but God whom you have never seen? You say, God, I love you. He says, you are a liar. So there is also a kind of love we've been talking about, which is the God kind of love. It is called the agape love. And that agape love we learned is sacrificial. Number two, it is unconditional. It is selfless. And then it is undeserved. Say with me, number one, God's love is sacrificial. Number two, it is unconditional. Number three, it is selfless. And number four, it's undeserved. Hallelujah. Amen. This month and this year, I remember standing here and saying to the church that as far as I'm concerned, this year we're going to go back to basics. And I meant every word of that. So today we are going back to the very basics of our call, of our unity as a body. And the title of the message that I have today is Endeavoring to Keep the Unity of the Spirit. Endeavoring to Keep the Unity of the Spirit. Father, we thank you for your word. Now, I want us to go straight to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12. And we're going to look at verse number 12, I believe, to verse number 18. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12. We'll be looking at Romans, chapter number 12. I don't know why that particular message seems to repeat itself, not only in Corinthians, but also in Romans chapter number 12. Now read from verse number 12. Unity and diversity in one body. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. I read that again. For as the body is one, and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. I want to pause there for a minute. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. When you and I got born again, the first thing that happened was an act of the Holy Spirit. And he took all of us and baptized us into one body. Say with me, one body. So many times when we talk about baptism of the Spirit, people straight away think of baptism of the Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, which is what happened at Pentecost. But before what happened at Pentecost occurred, something preceded that. The first thing that happens when we give our lives to Christ is that we are baptized by the Holy Spirit into one body. One body. And we are many members individually, but we are collectively one body. So when Bola was singing earlier, she said, I command my hands I command my feet, I command my body. From the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, we are made up of many members. Hallelujah. And we are baptized by the Spirit into one body. So the first thing the Holy Spirit does is he unites us. We are united as one body. The whole of the church of Christ is one body. We have the universal church, which is one body. We have our local church, all of us here, we are one body. When you walk into Living Springs, the church is one body. 
And that one body is made up of different parts. So there are some who are playing music, musicians. There are some who are doing works of administration. There are some who are ushering. There are some who are teaching. There are all kinds of different functions in the church. But every member has its own function. We all don't function the same. Just like the human body. God will use Paul the Apostle to teach us about the kingdom looking at the human body. Your hair, your eyes, your nose, your teeth, your hands, your fingernails, your toes. Every part of the body is vital. Every part of the body has a specific function. And the body functions or is well when all the various members of the body are functioning. If they stop functioning, you are sick. You need a doctor. And it's the same with the body of Christ. That the first thing we must think of is our unity. That we are united as one body. We have come from various places and we have become one in Christ. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? So he says, we have been baptized by one spirit, by the Holy Spirit. We have been baptized into one body. Say with me, I'm baptized into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. It's very important for us to acknowledge this. It says, whether Jews or whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one body. For, in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Of course it is. And if the ear should say, well, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. He pleased to set you in the body. And if they were all members or if they were all one member, where would the body be? If they were all one member, where would the body be? We are members of one another, hallelujah. And we come together to form one body. I want to put a marker there, I'll come back to this scripture. But let us go to the book of Romans, chapter number 12. I was saying that I find it curious that they are all in chapter number 12. Chapter number 12 of Romans and chapter number 12 also. Of First Corinthians. So Romans chapter number 12. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. For us, we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. <laughs> or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Hallelujah. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Hallelujah. We will come back to that in a few minutes. So a human body we have just established is just one. There's just one body, 
but it is made up of different parts and every part has a different function. In the same way, the church is called the body of Christ and it is made up of different people. Hallelujah. There's a scripture that I looked at earlier, I think in the book of... Colossians, okay, let's look at 1 Corinthians, chapter number 10, and verse number 17, please. I want you to keep thinking of the fact that we are one body. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 10, I read from verse number 16, I think it says, oh no, the, okay, from 17, the bread, I hope I'm at 17, oh, it says, for we, though many, are one bread, hallelujah, we, though many, are what, come on, preach with me, we, though many, are one, and one, for you all, partake of that one bread. Hallelujah. We though many are one bread and we are one body and we all partake of that one bread. And then again, Galatians chapter number three, please. Galatians chapter number three. Now I want to look at verse number 25. Galatians three. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you praise. Did I say 25 or 28? Okay, let's look at 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Hallelujah. So we were baptized into Christ, baptized into one body, and then we have done what we have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And you are Christ. Or if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. When we come to the communion and we read the story of the communion and how it came about, Paul the Apostle said something very profound. And he was very much against a practice that was going on in Corinth. Because what happened was when they went to have the Lord's Supper, those who were rich, the rich folk came to the, the house of God with, with food, all kinds of sumptuous food. And others came who were slaves, who were poor, and they had nothing. And so the rich would sit and eat and enjoy their food, whilst those who have nothing would sit back and watch them eat. And Paul would say to them, don't you have homes to eat your food in? Why would you bring your food to the house of God and prove to others that you are wealthy and eat your food whilst others are hungry, whilst they don't get any to eat? Don't you realize that you are one body? And so he says that Christ was wounded and bruised for us. So that through him, you and I may be united by his spirit into one body. So in the church, we are one body. In this house, some come from Sierra Leone. Some come from Jamaica. Some come from Nigeria. Some come from Ghana. Some come from Kenya. Some come from Cameroon. We are male. We are female. We come from all kinds of backgrounds but we are united as one body. And the one thing you and I must always endeavor to keep is the unity of the spirit. That unity is the most important thing. Many times the things that divide us are trivial. The things that bring division are insignificant. But the most important thing is that when we walk into the house of God, you recognize your brother that he is part of your body. <laughs> We are all members of the same body. And we have various functions. 
So you don't come to Living Springs and think that me, I am a nobody and I have no part in the church. I come to church and I don't do anything. No, you have a function. Are you functioning? What's your part in the body? Are you the eyes? Have you deliberately shut your eyes because you will not open your eyes? Are you the hand that should bring the food to the mouth? Have you intentionally folded your arms because you don't want to lift your hand into your mouth? We are members of one body. And growth comes, wellness comes, health comes when each and every one of us, I cannot say this enough, we need, if the church is going to grow, if Living Springs is going to move to the next level, you and I must understand that we are members of one another. And that is what we must guard. That is what we must protect. Because what the devil wants to do is to bring division. To divide one against the other. To gossip against somebody. And so he says, let love be without hypocrisy. Because hypocrisy is when you pretend like you're something which you are not. Hypocrisy is when you tell me you love me when I'm with you. But when you turn away from me, you badmouth me. The word hypocrisy in the Greek means play actor. You are a play actor. You are acting like you are, but you are not. Just to gain recognition, just to gain some acknowledgement. But when you turn from that person, what do you say? When you turn from that person and you hear somebody's bowed mouth in the person, can you defend them or do you go and join them to drag that person down? And yet when you see them, oh, hello, my sister, you, you have not understood that who you are, that we are members of the same body. We don't behave the same. We didn't have the same upbringing. We don't have the same behavior. We behave differently. Some behave like this, some behave like that. But we have a duty the Bible says we can make a choice to love one another. And love becomes the glue, the cement that holds the body of Christ together. Love. I love you. Regardless of your behavior, regardless of your attitude, I have made a conscious decision that I love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, we're talking about the unity of the spirit. And Paul the apostle says, we must guard. You know what the word endeavor means? It means trying to do something when it is hard. Strive. Do your best. Do your utmost. Do whatever it takes to preserve the unity of the spirit. Endeavor to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Let us endeavor to apply the peace of God to be that which binds us, the love of God which holds us together because the enemy wants us divided. And when we are divided, we are finished. A house that is divided can never stand. A church that is divided can never stand because we become factions and we don't flow. We don't work together. There is no flow because there is no togetherness. Living Springs, my prayer is that we will grow and understand that we are members of one another. Then God gave us gifts. Again, when we read the Bible, it tells us in the same chapter of Chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. Let's look at chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians. Not only have we received grace, not only have we received this baptism into the body as one, but we have received also gifts. God has given us gifts because we are going to need to deploy those gifts if we are going to serve God faithfully. Verse number 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but, um, and there are diversities of, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Another the word of knowledge through the Spirit, the same Spirit. To another faith by the same spirit, 
to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment or discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So we have the nine gifts of the spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to go through with me because we're a church. We're a Bible learning church. So we're going to go through with it. Number one, it says we have what? The word of? Ah, you are reading your Bible. You can't tell me. The word of? What's the first gift? What's the first gift of the spirit? Hey, some of you are muttering. Some of you are looking at me strangely. What is pastor talking about? Some of you are thinking I haven't received any gift. Yes, you have. If you are a member of the body, you have received. It says, we have received. It didn't say we shall receive. You need to discover your gift and begin to deploy it. You have received it. One day when you stand before heaven or before God, God will say, I gave you the gift. You say, ah, but I didn't know. You never, you never even inquired. So number one, a word of wisdom. Number two, a word of knowledge. Number three, okay, so let me hear from this side here on the right. Number one, try and close your Bible. Number one, number two, number three, middle section here. Number one, hey, come in here muttering. Number one, word of wisdom. Number two, word of knowledge. Number three, faith. Those of you here and my dear ministers and, and minister at the back. Yes, number one. Word of wisdom, number two. Number three. Let's go to the other three. What are the other three? Work, gift of healings. Okay, you have faith. Gift of healings. Working of miracles. Okay, let's pause there. So faith, gift of healings, working of miracles. Let's say that together. Faith. Gift of healings, working of miracles. Okay, let's go back to from one. Let's start from one. Number one, the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith. Some of you are muttering. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith. Gift of healings, working of miracles, prophecy. And then we have discernment of spirits, diverse tongues, interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. At least you're learning something. If you go home today, at least you've learned the nine gifts of the spirit. The Bible says we have received these gifts. So when we come on a Sunday like this, a sister sitting at the back somewhere is the one who has been given the gift of prophecy. Somebody has the word of wisdom. Somebody has the word of knowledge. Somebody has faith. Faith, and we're talking about extraordinary faith that can move mountains. Somebody is sitting there who can pray a prayer of faith and things will turn around in this house. You're sitting there, it's you. Somebody is out there sitting here who also has the gift of healings that they can lay hands. It doesn't have to be just the pastor. The people that we met in the New Testament, people like Stephen and Philip, they did amazing things, but they were only deacons and yet they had the grace of God upon them and they prayed and wonderful things happened. So somebody is sitting here, they have the gift of healings. They have what? The, 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 the working of miracles. And then they have also the gift of prophecy. We've said about that. And then somebody sitting here who also has the interpretation of tongues. When we give the tongues, one person can interpret every tongue we are declaring here. You are sitting here. You are sitting here. Somebody has the grace to discern spirits. If some dodgy spirit comes in here who doesn't belong to the body, who is not baptized into the body of Christ, you are the one who is, who is, who is going to sniff them out and know that this one is not part of the, the body. You discern. As soon as the thing comes into close contact, you discern the spirit of the person and you know that this one does not belong here. All these are gifts that have been given to us. And how do we operate? We're supposed to operate with these gifts in the body because the gifts are for the body of Christ. And it helps us to function. It helps us to be alert. It helps us to be sensitive. I pray that as you listen to me, you will ask of God to show you your gift. 
Even the fact that you said amen tells me you believe what I'm telling you. God has given every one of us. Nobody comes to church to warm the pew or to warm the seat and go home the same. You come because you are loaded with the gifts of the spirit. And God expects you to exercise those gifts when you come here. Let's look again at what we read in the book of Romans. Romans chapter number 12 again. Let's look at what Romans tells us in chapter number 12. And from verse... We read from verse number um, 7. But let's come down to... Ooh, where are we? Okay, I think it's verse number... Uh, what verse am I looking at? Four... Okay, for, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, hallelujah, and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, we have them. He says, let us use them. If it's prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to your faith. Don't prophesy something that is beyond your faith. Let it be in proportion to your faith. If it's ministry, let us use it in our ministry. And he who teaches in your teaching, use the gift. He who exhorts or encourages, use it in your encouragement. So there are some who come among us and their gift is just to encourage you meet them on the Sunday, you are all downcast like, you know, like the story of, 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 of Joseph who looked at the, the prisoners in the prison in, in Potiphar's, uh, you know, in the prison in Potiphar's house and looked at them and they were downcast and he said to them, you don't look well. What is the matter? What is the problem? They said, we've had dreams that we cannot interpret. He said, tell me, I know of one who is able to interpret dreams, so tell me your dream. And he was able to interpret the dreams and their countenance changed. There are people who are among us who are encouragers. You see them and just the smile on their face encourages you. And that's all they do. They may not be giving prophetic direction and doing all kinds of things because that's not their gift. And your gift may be just to encourage someone. And it could be just with a smile. So if you are an encourager, he says in your encouraging or in your exhortation, use the gift. There are some who give. And there are people who give liberally. And we have some in the house. They give. That's their calling. Every one of us is called to give. But there are some who give even the last that they've got. Why? Because that is their giving. Or that is their, I beg your pardon, their, their gift. And that is their ministry. And then there are those who lead. If you are a leader, he says lead with diligence. With sincerity, with care. And he who shows mercy, show mercy with cheerfulness. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? I want us to look at the book of Ephesians, please. Ephesians chapter number four. And I want to take it from verse number one to six. We'll read quite a bit of Ephesians today. Ephesians, where are you? Philippians. Ephesians chapter number four, and I want to read from verse number one to verse number six. Paul said, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We must endeavor to keep the unity of the church, the unity of the body of Christ. Endeavor, try hard. Make every effort, another translation says. Make every effort, whatever it takes, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Then he says there is one body. There are not two bodies or three or four. 
We all belong to the same one body. There is one body and one spirit. Sometimes you hear people talk as if we have a one spirit and they are operating with another spirit. You hear people like that. People come to church and, they, and the spirit said, and the spirit said, and the spirit said. And most of the time it's nothing but a, 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 a display of some kind of superiority to try and impress people that you are carrying some. There is only one spirit, not two or three or four. One spirit. Say with me, one body, one spirit. Hallelujah. One body, one spirit. Just as you were called in the hope of your calling. So there's one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this from the Amplified. Please bear with me because the Amplified, that's exactly what it does. It opens up the scripture. Paul is writing, and you know Paul wrote to the church in um, Ephesus from prison. The man is languishing in prison, but he finds it necessary to tell the church how they should conduct themselves. And he says, so I, the prisoner of the Lord, appeal to you to live a life worthy of the calling which, a, which you have been called. That is to love, not I beg your pardon, that is to live a life, amplified, that is to live a life that exhibits godly character, moral co courage, personal integrity, and mature behavior. A life that expresses gratitude to God for your salvation. Verse number two, with all humility, what is humility? Forsaking self-righteousness. That when you are humble, you don't engage in activities that make you to be self-righteous. Can I please, can you at the back do something with the, the feed in the, in the microphone, please? With patience bearing with one another in unselfish love. Verse number three, make every effort. Say with me, make every effort. So Paul the Apostle will tell us even right now that living springs make every effort to keep the oneness of the spirit in the bond of peace. Each individual working together to make the whole successful. The NIV says endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body of believers. There is one spirit just as you were called to one hope when we were called to salvation. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all who is sovereign over all and working through all and living in all. Hallelujah. When we get born again, as I said, we are united by the spirit, which we read from the book of 1 Corinthians 12, that we are united into one body. And so there is one body and we are supposed to live together in unity. And I say that oftentimes the differences among us can lead us to a place of division. But that should not be so in the church. Instead of concentrating on what divides us, we should remember what unites us. We should concentrate on what unites us more than what divides us. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. We must learn to appreciate people who are different from us. Learn to appreciate people who don't speak the language you speak. Learn to respect people who are not like you because we all cannot look the same. We are different. Understand how their difference or their different gifts and viewpoints can help the church and, and help us even to do God's work together. Learn to enjoy and celebrate the way which we are as members of the church or the body of Christ. Learn how to complement one another. We are not here competing. We are here to complement one another. Now, no one is ever going to be perfect here on earth. You may look perfect, but I want to disappoint you this morning to tell you, you are not perfect. None of us is perfect. The only reason why we haven't found your flaws is because we haven't looked deeply enough. For all of us, there are skeletons hidden in the cupboard somewhere. The only one who is perfect is Jesus Christ. 
Nobody else is perfect. So stop acting like you're perfect. I've had people walk into the church and they are critical of everything we do in the church. But you yourself that walked in, you are not perfect. So how dare you come and talk about somebody else? You are not. We judge, we condemn, we criticize. Matthew chapter number 7. I'll come back to this scripture. Let's go to Matthew 7. And from verses number 1, I think it is from verse number 1 to verse number 5. Matthew 7, verse number 5. Do not judge and criticize and condemn. I'm reading from the Amplified. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority. People have that attitude. Self-righteous. They have opinions about everything. Self-righteous superiority, as though assuming the office of a judge. Who made you a judge? He says, do not judge so that you yourself will not be judged. For just as you hypocritically judge others, when you yourself are sinful and unrepentant, so will you be judged. And in accordance with your standard of measure, used to pass out judgment, judgment will be measured to you. He says, why do you look at the insignificant speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the, and acknowledge the egregious or outstanding, bad, shocking, appalling, terrible, awful log that is in your eye. Your brother has a speck in his eye. You have a whole log in your eye. And you have the, 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 the audacity to say, my brother... I think there's a speck in your eye. Why don't you take the log from your eye first so that you can see clearly? Then you can help your brother to take the speck that is in eye. You have a bigger issue in your own life. You haven't dealt with your own issue. How dare you come and tell me how to deal with my issue? Hypocrisy. And yet they come and they flaunt themselves and they act all holy. Even they are walking. Like they are walking on air. And the spirit said, and the spirit said, I have one young lady who came recently, sent me a message 12 pages long, email. And the spirit said this, and the spirit said this about the gender. I said, what spirit? There is one spirit. And I believe that that spirit dwells in me even as it dwells in you. <laughs> and I don't need you to come and tell me when you yourself, the issues in your life, how dare you? Hypocrisy. Let's love one another with humility. Don't judge people hastily. You don't even know their story. You don't know where they are coming from. For some people, it took grace to come into the house this morning. Every step was by grace. And they come in quietly that they may receive of the grace that is from on high so that their lives can be just okay for them to go through next week. That's all they came in for the house. That's all they came in here to receive. And you will judge their, their dressing. You will judge their dance. Bishop said, when you see somebody dancing, when there is no music. And you will judge that also. We have lost what, what connects us. And we have become critical judges of one another. Judge not, so that you yourself are not judged. How can you say to your brother, let me get a speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You play actor. You are a pretender. First get the log out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly. And you take the speck out of your brother's eye. 
And all the church said, Amen. We have been called to walk in unity. And I was reading, I said, Let us learn to appreciate one another, celebrate one another. No one is perfect. And when we see faults in fellow believers, we should be patient and gentle with them. Be patient and gentle with me. I'm not perfect yet. That's not an excuse for me to continue to offend you. That's not an excuse for me to continue to misbehave. But in case I do something that doesn't measure to your high standard, the Bible says, you who are strong, bear with the weakness of the weak. We should pray for them. Pray for that brother, pray for that sister. So to build unity is one of the Holy Spirit's important roles. The Holy Spirit wants to build unity. The devil wants to bring division. And we do that by focusing on God rather than on ourselves. Now all believers in Christ, as I said, belong to one body. And we are all united under one head, which is Christ. And we have been given abilities by God, special abilities. Some may be large, some may seem small, but yours is what has been given to you as it pleased God. So take hold of your gift and exercise it. It makes you unique. And these unique gifts will contribute to the strength and the health of our church. God is overall, hallelujah. And he is through all. He is in all. It shows us the picture of the presence of the world that we live in or the presence of the world and in the lives of believers, his eminence. He shows us his eminence, if I can say that. God is in us all and he's above all and he's through all. And I said here, I was reading my notebook and in um, a book that we used to do Bible study in this house, Gordon and Faduli, it says that if we're going to walk in unity, what we need more of in our hearts is a forgiving spirit. If I'm going to be in that union, I need to be forgiven. And I need to be forgiven even before the person that has wronged me comes to say, I'm sorry. I'm already ready to forgive. We all fail, especially even in our relationships. But love is the cement that glues us together. When we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 4 downwards, we learned that love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. You cannot be rude and be operating in love at the same time. Some people are just rude. Love does not seek its own my way or no way at all. Love is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice when somebody fails. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love does not rejoice in anything but in truth. Only in truth does love rejoice. Then he says, love bears all things. I love the scripture. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. He says love never fails. In other words, love never collapses. There will never come a day when love says, that's it, no more. It never fails. It never collapses. Love is eternal by nature. Now, when we say that love bears all things, what does it mean? It means that love covers and love endures. It endures all things. Love credits others with good intentions. It never loses faith. In other words, when you love somebody, you are willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. You don't just jump up and believe whatever you heard. If you love them, you are going to trust the person at least and say, listen, the person that I know, this person that I know, it's not like that. It credits people with good intentions. Now, love hopes, not with unreasonable or unreasoning optimism. It doesn't mean that love makes you optimistic about everything. No. But it says that love is always expecting the ultimate triumph by the grace of God. So love always hopes. Where there is love, there is hope. Honey, it's going to be okay. You say to your husband or to your wife, 
We're going through challenges, but things are going to be okay. I believe that things are going to change in our favor. Love hopes. Love endures in an active, positive sense. So when we love, or when love has no evidence, sometimes the person is operating in love, but there is no evidence of any breakthrough, whatever. He says love believes. Even when there is no evidence, it believes the best. <laughs> And when the evidence is adverse, when the evidence is contrary to what we are hoping for, it says love will make you to be what? It will make you to continue to hope. Love hopes even when the evidence is not sufficient. When the evidence is even absent, love hopes for the best. And when our hopes are repeatedly dis disappointed, uh, uh, love still courageously waits. It says another opportunity is going to come. Let's hold on together. Things are going to get better. Love does not betray. Love holds together. Love binds together. I pray that the church will be bound by the spirit of love. Love is the only way by which we can grow the church. Living Springs can become another different environment if we get this message that we are members of one another. And then now we are zealously protecting our unity. We do not allow somebody to come among us to come and scatter us. We protect what we have with zeal because we understand that there is power in our unity. I want to share a story with you and then if time permits, I will conclude. But let's look at a scripture in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter Number 11. Genesis chapter number 11. And there's a beautiful story there of the Tower of Babel. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. If it's your Bible or maybe it's your mobile phone, kindly do me this honor and underline it or highlight it. The whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shina and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, remember they have one speech, they have one language. They said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. These people had a plan. And when you look at this story, it tells me that it probably belongs to the period after the flood of Noah. So after the flood, men had one language and they had one speech. They wanted to build a tower. Somebody will say, what is wrong with the tower they wanted to build? Well, I'll tell you what is wrong with it. What they wanted to do was to build a monument to their own greatness. Something for the whole world to see. The city became the cultural focus of mounting human arrogance. It was going to be a monument of their own greatness. And it was symbolic of human arrogance on the increase right after the flood when God had destroyed everything because the works of men were continually evil before God, now we see them regrouping. And what do they want to do? To build a tower that reaches to the heights of the heavens. And the account recorded here was a special judgment on the blatant embodiment of the ungodly spirit that again, after the flood, characterized humanity or human civilization, they wanted to go back to the ways before Noah's flood and do things based on their own strength. The Tower of Babel was a great human achievement 
It was. It was a wonder of the world. And it clearly demonstrates what men can do together. So even though God was disappointed with the motive for which they built, because, you know, sometimes we ourselves build monuments in our lives. A lot of things we do in our lives is about building monuments for ourselves and for our name. But you see, the problem was this, that God does not like it when we build monuments and use material things to become the source of our identity and the source of our self-worth. If our identity and self-worth is in things and they are not in God, then we, 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 we are not going anywhere. God must be at the center of our lives. And we are free to develop in many areas of our lives, but we are not free to think that we can replace God. So they wanted to replace God and do things their own way. And the Bible says, the, the, the story is interesting. God came down. These people said they want to build a tower to be up in the heavens, to be where God is. And yet when God wanted to come and look at the tower, he had to come down. We can never get to where he is. The greatest experience of getting to where he is is when we acknowledge that he is in us. God had to come down. This thing they were doing, which they thought was the greatest thing since sliced bread. God had to come down and look at what they were doing. But there's something that God said. He said the people are united. They have one speech. They have one language. One translator says they are one race with one tongue, with one purpose. If the church should do this, we will be unstoppable. What did God say? The people are one. They have one language. The vision is one. They are all looking at the same vision. They are all looking and speaking the same language. If we say we are all moving from the church right now to go to Forest Hill Station to go and evangelize, nobody's going to take his bag and say, me, I'm going home. All of us are going. We carry our bags. We will go there and we will do tremendous work at the station. We will go there and do amazing work because the language is one. If we all say we are meeting to pray, these days when I come to prayer meeting, I need strength because people have decided in this house that prayer meeting is not for them. Oh, I'm not feeling well. That's why you should come and pray. Nobody came and prayed and died in the house. Oh, the challenges are too. That's why you should be here. You come and it's just minister and minister Fatty and Frida is in Ghana, so she's not here. Uh, uh, sometimes it's uh, Ben and, and, and they are all in Ghana. And when I walked in, I said, ha, ah, Lord have mercy. You are sitting at home and you know Friday is prayer meeting. And you are a member of the body. We are united and we are strong in our unity. So why are you sitting at home watching EastEnders? Why are you watching some program on TV? Some other church on TV? When you have a duty to come and pray. And you are the very person who say, oh, these days we are not seeing the move of God cry. How would the move of God come about? Maybe you don't have money. Cry to God. Say, Lord, I need my bus ticket. I need the money for my bus fare to go to pray. And see whether God will not give you the money. I need petrol in the car so that I can go to church. Lord, I am going to church to pray. Friday is a prayer meeting and I am going. Whatever it takes, I am going. And see whether God will not give you money to buy the petrol in your car. But the will is not there. So we do things haphazardly. And we don't see the glory of God in our lives. I know this message is hard, but I have to say it. We need to grow up. We are united. The body functions when everybody does his bit. What is your bit? God said, look at the people. They have become one. They have one language. Because see, they speak one language. They have one tongue. They have one purpose. And God said, nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. There is nothing we cannot do when we are united. Living Springs, we're going to... Recently, Uncle Joel came to me. He said, Pastor, I, I, I want to take uh, um, some, some donation from, from people so that we can do the foyer. What's happening in the foyer? As you walked in, I'm sure you saw that we are replacing the tiles. And how did he do it? He said, I'm going to go to people 
and appeal to them and ask them, everybody, to make a contribution. And we've raised enough money to do it. Why? Because it's not a one-man business. But the church came together and people gave. 50 pounds, 100 pounds. Some even gave 200 pounds. And we put the money together, and guess what? The work is already being done. We can do so much when we are together. Welfare, we're talking about helping people when they are bereaved. We can do it when we are together. Everybody brings 20, 25, 30. Maybe I can do 40, 50. And by the time we have gathered that together, Somebody here is going to have a smile. Because sometimes when the funeral comes, it's not the person who has passed. But it's about how you're going to raise the money to buy your air ticket. And they are waiting for you back home because you are in London. And your name is on the obituary that you are in London. And that alone means you are coming with goodies. Your uncles are full of instructions and they are there to tell you Things to do, but nobody's going to contribute a penny because you are from London or from Canada or from the US of A. So when you are crying, the tears. <laughs> I've been there. So I can tell you, those of you whose parents are still alive, me, I've been there. And that's when you, 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 if you belong, you, you, we can gather together and say, if it happens to one, it has happened to all of us. Come, let us build a tower. The motive was wrong, but the means was approved by God. God said the people have one language. When Vincent stands here and says, Welfare, this is what we are doing. The people have one language. Men's fellowship, women's fellowship, when they say this is what we are doing, they have one language. Somebody's not going to say, as for me, I don't go to women's fellowship. You are a woman. Unless you are a man and you have been masquerading as a woman. <laughs> because by default, if you are a woman, you must belong to women's fellowship. You are in the body, you are a woman, but you are not part of women's because I, I don't flow with them. You don't flow with who? When they do programs, you absent yourself. Men's fellowship. When men meet, you are not here. When the women meet, also you are not there. So you are neither a man. So, so who exactly are you? I'm preaching. <laughs> we need to come to a place of unity where we operate as one. Not looking at the mistakes of people because as I said, you are not perfect. I am not perfect. We are all imperfect people following a perfect man. The Bible says until we come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ to a perfect man. We haven't gotten there yet. We are striving. And he says, whilst we are striving, let us do it with a bond of peace and walk in love. Love covers a multitude of sins. When I wrong you, love will make you just overlook that doesn't mean go around offending people in the hope that they forgive you. Somebody might not forgive you. Somebody might choose to slap you. Thou shalt be slapped. But still, we need to look at the bigger picture. We are imperfect beings, but we have been brought into a perfect unity by the Spirit. And we must endeavor. My message this morning is very simple. Let us try. Endeavor means try. Say with me, try. You know that the brother or the sister sometimes gets under your skin, but try. For the sake of the unity of the body. Because that brother who gets under your skin is also part of the body. 
Maybe he's the, he's the fingernails. And that day when you want to scratch your back without your fingernails, you will see how futile the work is. He may look insignificant. He may look like he hasn't got any extraordinary gift. Because many in the church often like the power gifts. Prophecy. Aha, the prophet. But you see, the Bible is not only about the gift of prophecy. Yours may be something that looks insignificant. That's your part. Maybe you are the eyelash. Today, eyelashes are important. Let me not even go there. Not for the men, but for the women. The other day, I saw this eyelash. I said, God, have mercy. It's like you need to move out of the way. Otherwise, the eyelashes will just bash. It will just slap you in the face and move you to somewhere else. But we are all significant. I may not seem significant in your eyes. But God who planted me in the body knows that without me, things don't go well. Living Springs, let's celebrate one another. That's my message. Let's love one another. This is the month of love. Today after service, go to somebody you've never spoken to before. And say, brother, what is your name? Because I'm sure you don't even know the person's name. And yet you meet them every day. But we are members of the same body. Maybe you're here, you don't know Jessica. If I say how many of you know Jessica apart from the choir, you probably might not even know who Jessica is. And yet she stands here to minister every day for us. Let us make it a habit to celebrate one another. To embrace one another. Look beyond the faults of the brother. Look beyond their faults. There is much more that unites us than divides us. Rise to your feet. Hallelujah. I want us to spend about maybe 10 minutes to pray for the unity of God's people. Hallelujah. The song says we are heads of the Father. We are joint heads with the Son. I may not be your idea of a body, body, body. But we have been thrown into the same body by God. And God has, God, God has a sense of humor. Do you know that? God has a sense of humor. He will throw the person in and see how you engage with this person. Because <laughs> you are laughing. God has a sense of humor. Somebody who is diametrically opposed to everything you stand for. And, you know, very argumentative. And, you know, they do things like they are coming from outer space. But God throws them into the body. So that we need to check our actions and also our reactions. When somebody does something, it's not just about your action. But how you react also to the action of the person. And this morning we want to pray. That Lord bind us together with the cord of peace, with the bond of peace, with love for one another, that we will celebrate our brother, we will celebrate our sister. If you hear somebody saying something about anybody in living, say, hey, don't go there. If you love somebody, you will not gossip about them. When somebody comes to tell you something that is gossip, you say, okay, wait, um, I'm going to call the brother and put it on loudspeaker so that what you are saying the brother can hear. If you do that one time, that person will never come again. You say, I'm going to put it on loudspeaker. And, and you said he did this and that. Okay, now tell, let him hear. Oh, no, 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 no. I was only coming to tell you so we can pray about it. You yourself, you don't pray. You're going to pray about who? Why would you want to pray about my situation? Let love be without hypocrisy. If you don't love me, tell me so that I don't come into your space. When I see you coming, even though we are in the same church, and, but I, at least I will wave you from very far. Say hi, see you later. See you later, alligator. And go my way. So that we can grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you hold somebody's hand? Somebody next, maybe it's your minister. It's yours truly. Hold somebody by the hand. Hallelujah. 
And the Bible, Paul the Apostle is in prison. But his heart is yearning for the church. And he said, endeavor, please, whatever you do, don't allow the devil to break you up. Don't allow the devil to divide you. You must endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Try hard. Some people, you have to love them with greater teeth. But love them all the same. Lift up your voice and begin to pray for the persons whose hands you are holding. Tell the person in your prayer that I love you with the love of the Lord. If anybody gossips about you, <laughs> listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. You remember the friendship of David and Jonathan? And Jonathan is the prince wearing the princely garment. And David is a shepherd boy. Broke. The word broke even doesn't even sum him up. His own father forgot him. But now he comes into the palace and Jonathan takes off his garment. The garment of a prince. He gives it to David. His sword, his belt, everything that identifies him with kingship, he gives to David. And he's saying to David, David, if anybody is going to hurt you, it's not going to be me. In this palace, if anybody wants to hurt you, everything that I have, my sword, my everything that I have by which I can harm you, I've given to you. Isn't that beautiful? I've handed over everything to you. Tonight or this morning, we're praying that anything that I have, which I could ever use to harm you, I surrender it this morning in the name of Jesus. And we are praying for one another that if you should hear gossip, know that it's not me. I will not speak bad of you. I will not go and gossip about you. I will not go and sit somewhere and condemn you and when I see you smile with you and pretend. I will not be a play actor with you because I'm serious about the love I have for you. Lift up your voice. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Mando sombra ni ma ante le lebe ni ko badori azi ante le bihada mante le le bosete ba mando sombra mante le le bosete ni ko badori amazi ni mi ante le lebe rapa di ni mi ante la ba ba ya ripota la ba ba ya ante le lebe ni ko badori azi ni ante le le bose ni mando bosota la ba ba ya ye kaba ya da ya mante le le bosete ya be ripota la ba ba Holy Spirit, bind us together. Bind us together with love, with cause that cannot be broken in the name of Jesus. Ah, bind us together, my God, with the bond of peace in the name of Jesus. Help us to celebrate one another. Help us to cherish one another. Help us to love one another. Help us to look out for one another in the name of Jesus. In the verse 9, 8, 9 of Romans 12, it says, Let love be without hypocrisy. We are rooting out hypocrisy in the name of Jesus. That love will be genuine, love will be sincere, love will be heartfelt. When the person says, I love you, you can feel it in your heart that this brother, this sister loves me with the love of the Lord. And therefore, I will not judge you. I will not condemn you. I will not criticize you. That doesn't mean that we will not correct people when they need to be corrected. I'm not saying that. But you will not make it your full-time occupation to criticize and to judge others. Lift up your voice. Two more minutes and I'm done. Lift up your voice and say that I will love you with love that is genuine, love that is sincere, love that is not hypocritical in the name of Jesus. Mando Bosa, Dakaba, 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 D
In the name of Jesus, bind us together with cords of love. In the name of Jesus, help us to celebrate one another. In the name of Jesus, help us to love one another. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, we give you praise. Holy Spirit, help us to preserve the unity that we have as members of the same body. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let us sing together. We are heads of the Father. We are joint heads with the Son. Oh, we are children of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. We are family. We are family. We are one. Oh, we are the love of the Lord. I can see in you the glory of the Lord. That will be the first song we will use for the offering. Hallelujah. As you are coming, come with a cheerful heart. Hallelujah. You love God, you hate your brother. That is a lie. We are all coming to give towards the work of God. It's our offering that we use to pay the bills in this house. It's the money you give that we use to pay the mortgage. Envelopes are going around. So please, if you've not gotten an envelope with a wave of hand, we'll give you one. Living praise. Are we ready? Love you with the love. Looks like they are not ready. I love you with the love of the Lord. Oh, I can see, I can see, see you, the glory of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I can see, I can see. you 
Thank you for what you have given to us, and we have given it back to you. Bless it, sanctify it, and let it be used for what it was meant for. In the mighty name of Jesus, and those who are not able to give, we pray that Lord, you empower them to have a job to do, and they also come and give to bless your name. We give you the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please have your seats. Are the announcements ready, please? Announcement. Thank you. Hello, Living Springs family. We're so glad you could join us today. Whether you're a new or existing member, we'd like to welcome you to today's service. My name is Stacy. And my name is Gabriel. And here are today's announcements. If this is your first time joining us, we would like to give you a special welcome and connect with you. So before you go, a member of the First Touch team will be nearby to sync with you. Thank you. Webinar Book Launch. You are cordially invited to the launching of the Worshipping Women Revised Edition. In this book, Reverend Evelyn is emphatic about having a pure heart before God. She also expatiates on the beauty of the figurative Worshipping Woman who is the church and that of the physical Worshipping Woman. This book will take your worship life to another level. Date, Saturday, 24th February, 2024. Time, 6 p.m. GMT. Don't miss Noah Robinson's interview with Reverend Evelyn. See you there. The welfare team would like to remind everyone of their £20 contribution going towards Brother Richard's mother's funeral. Thank you. As a new member, you are welcome and encouraged to take part in our membership classes, which are running Sundays after church. To confirm your attendance, please speak to Minister Francis. If you have recently moved or changed your phone numbers, please speak to Minister Francis or Mr. Fred Boateng so we can update our records. Thank you. There will be youth service after church at 1pm. All youths from 13 and above are encouraged to come. Thank you. Our midweek services are as follows. On Mondays, we have prayer online on Zoom starting at 7 p.m. On Wednesdays, we have Bible study also online at 7. And on Friday, meet here at Zoe House for prayer starting at 7 p.m. We have Sunday school running upstairs every week. So we encourage parents to bring their kids to church so that we can train them up in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they won't depart. Thank you. This year, we'll be having our Mother's Day weekend celebration from Friday the 8th of March to Sunday the 10th of March. More details to follow. And if you don't already know, we are streaming every Sunday service online on YouTube and Facebook. So don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. The announcement cut-off day is Friday. Any announcements made after this day may not be announced. All announcements can be sent to announcement at livingspringinternational.org. Thank you. Eating and drinking is not permitted in this sanctuary. If you would like to do so, please do so in the foyer. And that's all from us, church. And remember, this year, creation is anticipating our manifestation. Have a blessed week. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, next week is getting to the end of the month. So please, if you have any food in your fridge... Make sure you do justice to it before Wednesday. 
we'll be having our days of what? Manifestation. Hallelujah. It's fasting and prayer week this week. We begin on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we end it on Friday on Sunday. Hallelujah. So please take note, this week is a week of what? Week of fasting and prayers. So please don't exempt yourself. We all heard what pastor said. Hallelujah. With oneness and unity, we can do greater things. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have anyone worshiping with us for the first time? Anyone worshiping with us? No newcomer? Thank, we thank God. And any birthday or anniversary? Young man, come. Any birthday or anniversary? If you are having your birthday or an, marriage anniversary, car anniversary or whatever, whichever anniversary, or you've been at your workplace for a long time and they've increased your pay, come. And then you pay your tithe to Hallelujah. Amen. Only one birthday for this week. Please, let's be on our feet. Let's all lift up our voices and pray for Isaiah Clayton. Hallelujah. We are praying for Isaiah. That may God continue to lift him up from grace to grace. May he never lack. Wherever that he goes, may the favor of God be upon his life. Uh, uh, may he be uh, like a, what, uh, a tree planted by the rivers of water. Uh, may he never, what, he, may his leaves never wither. As he is growing, may his strength uh, and his wisdom and his knowledge in the, of God uh, be increased. Uh, pray for him, pray for him that, that may God protect him. Uh, may God deliver him from bad friends. Uh, may God deliver him from bad influence. Uh, may the favor and the anointing and the power of God uh, overshadow his life. Uh, Isaiah Clayton, this day uh, will bring you before the throne of grace uh, that may God uh, continue to be with you. Uh, may you be uh, a beacon of hope for your family. Whatever your hand touches, uh, may he be blessed. Uh, you are covered under the mighty hands of God uh, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We give you the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Living Springs, what do we say? Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, happy, 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 happy birthday. And on that note, I want us to lift a prayer for all the youth, the vibes, the young adults. Last week, something happened. And this week too, we are committing them into the hands of God. That God, those in the universities, those in schools, those who are not here, we are lifting them before the throne of grace. That God protect our youth. Our youth, our children, wherever they are, we pray for your covering. May the blood speak on their behalf. Uh, lift up prayer and protect them. Uh, lift up prayer and tell God that God protect our children wherever they are. Those at school, those on the roads, uh, those in trains, uh, those in planes, uh, wherever they are, we'll lift up our voices. Uh, oh God, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, whatever the attacks of the enemies are, uh, today or this day, uh, we cancel it uh, in the name of Jesus. We cancel it uh, in the name of Jesus. Preserve our children. Preserve our children. Preserve our children. Preserve our children. Preserve our youth. Uh, preserve our youth. Uh, deliver them. Uh, 
from bad friends. Deliver them from bad friends. Deliver them from bad friends. Those on the road, deliver them. Those in the train, deliver them. Those in the universities, my God, deliver them. In the name of Jesus. Our children or the youth, they are the next generation. A time will come, we will not be here again. But they will take our places. Jehovah God will bring them before your throne of grace. Whatever the enemy is doing, or scheming, or planning, this day, Living Springs will bring them before your throne of grace. Protect them. Guide them. Deliver them. Encourage them. Strengthen them. Energize them. Let them be faithful. Let them be faithful. Let them be faithful. Let them be strong to say no. Let them be strong to say no. Let them be strong to say no. Protect them from evil friends. Protect them from evil friends. Well, thank you, Lord. Let them be like the three Hebrew boys. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. And they said no. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We thank you for answered prayer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please have your seats. There is going to be a youth service after close of service. So please, parents, don't be in a rush to take the children home. There is a youth service. Parents, don't be in a rush to take your children home. There is a youth service. Amen. And yes, last week, we started collecting 20 pounds for welfare. So please, if you have not redeemed yourself, after close of service, see the welfare minister, Mr. Vincent Taylor, and then pay your dues. Hallelujah. Because this one is no contribution, no chop. If you don't pay, a time will come. You also need the welfare. And they will show you the books. So please, do the needful. Let's all be on our feet as we are closing. Let's lift up our hands. As the Lord remembered Joseph in prison, may God remember us this week. He remembered Samuel and spoke to him. He remembered Samson at the tight corner and he went to Samson's rescue. This week, may God remember us wherever the life is taking us, may God see us through. May God protect us from evil. Whatever imaginations of the enemy is, this day, it shall not come near you. Their plans will come to nothing because Jehovah is your strength. Jehovah is your guide. Jehovah is your deliverer. Jehovah is your sustainer. He is your provider. He is your shepherd. And because he is our shepherd, we shall not lack any good thing. May the Lord protect you. May his face shine on you. May he deliver you from every attack of the enemy. You are blessed. Go there and win in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Before we share the grace. Please, I just felt this strongly when I was I'm, I'm sitting there. If you know somebody who didn't come to church or lately you haven't seen them, and maybe they're in your family group, Please, I, I urge you, pick up the phone and if you have their number, call them just to say hello to them. A few people that I haven't seen uh, who have been missing for quite a few weeks now. So you be the bigger person and take the phone and just say, I'm just checking on you to see whether you are okay. Please, are, are we going to do that? Let's see by hand those who are going to try. He says try. Let us try. Call somebody and find out how they're doing. God bless. May we share the grace, please. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, 
and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Amen.